presenting the Fuji TX2. Now, this one might look a little bit familiar, as a while back we did a little video about its older sibling, the TX1, which you can see by clicking here. But before we get into uh, this great camera, um, I wanted to tell you that you should be wearing some JCH merch while you're doing that, while you're watching the video. Um, we've got these awesome t-shirts and fantastic hoodies as well, which look absolutely brilliant. And there's all sorts of other stuff on there too, stickers and whatnot, so go and grab yourself something cool and uh, wear it whilst you're watching the video. And everything that you buy helps us keep on making these videos, so I really appreciate your support. Thanks. Anyway, onto the remarkable Fuji TX2, which is basically a Hasselblad X-Pan in disguise. Back in the day, when camera companies were adventurous and actually made cameras that were not insipid boxes of buttons and magical nonsense, Fujifilm and Hasselblad did some hand-holding and beach skipping, and the TX was the result of this international union. And what a result! An actual, genuine panoramic 35mm camera. Not a squish down the frame to make it look panoramic, but an actual panoramic frame of 24 by 65 millimeters, which means you get about 20 shots per 36 exposure roll. Cool beans, until you have to start scanning that is. So what is the difference between this and the TX1? Well at first glance, not all that much really. In fact, just by looking at it, you may be fooled into thinking that it is the black paint that makes them so pricey. But silly rabbit, this isn't a Leica. There are actual improvements. You see, the changes to the Fuji TX2 over the TX1 are not merely superficial. They're the clear, you know, evolutionary process which has been well thought out. Initially, the most obvious is the ISO dial, which is gone. That was easy to knock on the uh, TX1, and so they've listened and they've put it into the main control panel along with exposure compensation which makes the camera a lot easier to handle. The, shut, the viewfinder has a much brighter readout as well with uh, more information on there, which is also very helpful for you. The other changes are a little bit less obvious, um, but they're the result of Fujifilm and Hasselblad actually listening to customers and implementing design changes based on customer feedback, something which a lot of camera manufacturers could probably do with doing, you know, doing today. You have got the uh, two second self timer, which makes things a lot easier for self portraits and things like that. Um, there is also the film leader will come out. So when you rewind, the film leader stays out, which is brilliant. You can set that. Um, another biggie is the nine second bulb, uh, nine minutes, sorry, bulb setting for all you stargazers out there. And my personal favorite, multiple exposures. Uh, I'm not very good at multiple exposures, so it's not one I'm going to use, but I think it's a really cool feature to have on the camera. I'll tell you a little bit of a story about this camera. I had one of these. I took it to uh, Joshua Tree in the United States and shot Velvia slide film on it. And it was very difficult. You didn't, it wasn't easy to get the shots right, but when you did get it right, wow, man. I mean, it really blew me away. The reason why I don't own one of these cameras anymore is precisely that because it's a very involved process shooting with one of these not just shooting preparing to shoot but the whole process all the way through scanning printing and it takes up a lot of, a lot of time time that as Japan Camera Hunter became more successful I no longer had so I had to unfortunately sell my TX and uh, move on to different cameras but I do miss it and I do you know, when one comes across in the office, I do try to make sure I shoot it because it is such a rewarding experience. So, the TX2 isn't just a pretty package. It is the whole kit and caboodle. And I figure, what better way to show this than to take it out for a spin? Off we go. So, how about we uh, load this sucker up and take it out and shoot some panoramics of the new neighborhood, which is Asagaya in Tokyo.
Okay, so there are some other cool features on this camera that I wanted to mention. Um, one of the upgrades they did was to upgrade the seals in the camera so that if you're shooting IR film, it's gonna be much less prone to fogging, which is pretty cool. Um, also, the uh, eyepieces can be changed out, so if you need a diopter eyepiece, you can change them out. But they're really old cameras, good luck finding the parts, probably not gonna happen now. But one of the best features about this camera is the panoramic isn't set. You don't have to put a roll in and have a panoramic only roll of film. You can switch between 35 millimeter and panoramic anytime while you're shooting through the roll. The counter will update to tell you how many shots you've got left based on what you're shooting. And that is brilliant. That's not an upgrade. That was in the TX1 as well. And it's just such an amazing feature. Um, there's also the grip. And this is cool. This was also on the TX1. The grip is interchangeable. So initially, Fuji did offer, <coughs> Fuji did offer a, a wooden grip. But now you can go online and you can go onto Etsy and things like that. And there's people making super cool custom grips. Um, you know, upcycled skateboards and things like that, which is rad. So you can customize your camera. Um, there's a lot of features on this thing and it is uh, a, a real joy to use. Some important things to note about this camera. Parts, uh, hoods, eyepieces, viewfinders, center filters. Parts on this camera are incredibly hard to find. If you lose them, they're gone forever. If you break them, they're gone forever. Don't ask me to find them. I can't, sorry. Look after your camera. If you get one of these, take care of it, tuck it into bed at night, sing it a sweet lullaby, feed it only the finest film, but make sure you look after it and it will look after you. My final thoughts on the TX2. This is a really interesting and unique camera. It's this love child of this Japanese and Swedish company that came together and produced something that they both in some way kind of ignore now. They could have carried on with panoramic. They had something good going on. They didn't. That's unfortunate. But it is a camera that I think everybody should own one at least once. If not own one, borrow one. Beg. Don't steal. That's not cool. But try and get your hands on one and shoot with one. I think every photographer deserves to. It is an absolutely incredible camera. It's a really rewarding experience. It does take time to get used to it. It does take time to learn how to use it properly. But when you do use it properly, you have that magic moment. It is fantastic. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Make sure you follow and subscribe.